This video continues our look at Spark SQL and we started writing some code that set up our Spark session. Uh, just to show that we can do the types of things we had done before, I like to make my Spark not quite so, so verbose. There was a method set log, le log level on the Spark context. Turns out that Spark session doesn't have an equivalent, but we can go through the Spark session to get a Spark context and then set the log level to warn so that we don't get a whole bunch of info messages. Spark, the session does have a stop method and I'll go ahead and call that at the end. So in between these two, I want to load in some data. Now, let's talk for a second. What data am I going to load in? I gave this the name NOAA data. Uh, the data set that we are going to play with here actually comes from NOAA's FTP site, so you can see the URL here, and I am just going to look at one year for this. They actually have many, many years, uh, but I am working with the 2017, so this is a partial year that I have because at the time that I'm recording this, we're still in the middle of 2017. And this site also has some additional kind of descriptions of some of these files. One other that you can see from the purple color here that I have downloaded is a stations data file. So the stations data file is a text file that has information about all the different stations that appear anywhere in this data set going back into the 1700s. Okay, so that's the information we're going to be playing with. We'll look at it a little bit more. Once again, I am not putting the data files in my GitHub repository because, especially in this case, they're huge. I don't know if you noticed this, but the 2017 is 127 megabytes zipped up, and it's a text file, so it's actually close to a gigabyte when you unzip the whole thing. And that's the data set that, that we want to load in here. Okay, so that's the data that we are working with, and I want to, to load it in. Now, in order to load it, I can take my Spark session, and it has an object on it called read, which is a data frame reader. Now, the data frame reader has quite a few different methods for reading different types of data for us. We can also set different options on it. Uh, in this case, if I just want to read a CSV file, I can give it the path. I put these inside of data, do a refresh here, there's that 2017.csv, and let's store this as val data 2017, just in case at some point in a future video I decide I want to download a second year so that we can do comparisons or something like that. So this gives me a data frame back, and it would be interesting to, to look at it. Turns out the data frames have a nice method on them called show. So assuming that I have this all right, I should be able to run this, oh, except it doesn't have a main. Uh, I am gonna do some plotting later, so I am going to say this extends JFX app, if I didn't intend to do plotting, I could just uh, either extend app, even though you know, I've never run into problems with it, or add a main method and put this code inside of a main method. So you can see we get the numerous printouts, and here is a table of values. It's not nicely named. Uh, mainly because if you look in that file, which we should probably go ahead and do, if we less that file, you can see it has no header information and it has an assortment of, of values in here, a lot of which we don't care about. There's these empty commas. You know, this loads it in, uh, but it treats them all as strings. And in fact, we could see that by uh, looking at the schema for this. So schemas 
have our information about what data is being stored and what uh, what it looks like. If we run this again, I'm printing out information about our schema here. Uh, you might have noticed one thing about these data frames, that show method, whereas previously when we had been working with RDDs, they didn't necessarily display nicely. They displayed however we had set things up. The RDDs, or the, the data frames, actually display as nice tables, much like they would in a database, if you were looking at things. And here is the uh, schema, and you'll notice that everything in here is a string, and they're all set to nullable. This data, though, is not all strings, and in fact, we're going to want to do some math with some of it. So, in particular, so this right here is a date, and these are all going to be numbers for numeric values that are read. I would like to be able to treat those. This and this are, are strings and everything else we don't care about. I'd like to be able to tell Spark that there is that information there, that those are the types of things, so that it can do things more intelligent with that data. In order to do that, we need to define a schema and then add a few options to how we read it in, and we'll do that in the next video.